All right, welcome back to another episode. So, hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans, it's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just three nerdy veterans geeking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies, a place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. So without further ado, we will jump right into this topic. So we are doing another review episode. Today, we're going to review the epic Forgotten Ruin novel by Jason Onspach and Nick Cole. Uh, we will try to leave the dad uh, disappointed dad faces out of it, you know, but we'll, we'll do what we can. So uh, we'll start with reading the bio of the author so you get a little bit uh, know them. So the author, Jason Onspach, is the author of Legionnaire, Till Death, and also other things. He is the co-creator of the military science fiction franchise, Galaxy's Edge, and lives in the Pacific Northwest together with one wife, seven kids, the crew of the Indelible Six, the ghost of Calvin Coolidge, and the family dog, Charlotte. Um, okay, poor him. Calvin Coolidge? Kind of a boring dude. Um, and then we've got Nick Cole, a former soldier and working actor living in Southern California. When he is not auditioning for commercials, going out for sitcoms or being shot, kicked and stabbed or beaten to death by students of various film schools for their projects, he can be found writing books. Uh, Nick Cole's The Old Man in the Wasteland was an Amazon bestseller uh, and number one in science fiction. Uh, in 2016, Nick Cole's Control-Alt-Revolt won the Dragon Award for Best Apocalyptic Novel. Uh, last year, he won the Dragon Award for uh, military science fiction, and currently um, co-writing that with his author co-author Jason, uh, who we mentioned above. So, I think Nick needs to update his bio. I don't think he's actually doing the acting gig anymore. But he's yeah, well, acting human does that count? Sure, we'll go with that. All right, so we'll start with how we first found the uh, the Forgotten Ruin book. So we're going to go with our guest first. So, uh, Sparky, how did you find? Well, you know what? Let's introduce yourself. So, Sparky, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself real quick? Keep it short and pithy. Uh, I'm I'm Sparky. I live in Arkansas. I'm from North Texas originally. Uh, I am a sci-fi and fantasy nerd. Uh, I like to shoot in outdoors. And I found Forgotten Rune as a perk of the uh, Galaxy's Edge Insiders. He also hosts a um, RPG in the Forgotten Ruin. Uh, universe the, through his savage gaming company over on Twitch. Yes. So uh, I will leave that uh, scrolling for a few minutes. Um, Archangel, tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. Keep it pithy and how you found uh, Forgotten Ruin. Uh, so I am the Florida man of the group, apparently. Um, Daniel likes to say that I ride around on meth gators and fire machine guns into the air, but that's just a fantasy. Only every Sunday. For now. Um <laughs> Thanks, honey. She gets um, brownie points. She does. But uh, no, I found, same thing, I found Forgotten Ruin whenever they announced it to the Insiders for Galaxy's Edge. And uh, it has been, like, next to Galaxy's Edge, it's my favorite book so far. Okay. And uh, Sparky, you didn't show your channel hard enough, by the way. Um, we, yeah. we can do better, but I'll keep the scroll yeah. bar on for a little bit. So did you want to give us, like, the five thirty second elevator pitch on that? What's your what's your yeah. planning? Uh, Savage Gaming uh, Company Gaming is where me and my friends stream our uh, Forgotten Ruin uh, ta virtual tabletop game, old school D and D stuff. And we've been doing a demo game for the past four weeks. We're doing a game tonight, and first uh, week of May we'll be starting a proper campaign with a proper storyline, and hopefully lots of shenanigans, lots of with fun, lots of violence. Characters? With proper characters, proper NPCs, or, or improper stories. proper characters. Don't get definitely them. improper. <laughs> All kinds of uh, goblins and orcs will be touched in their no-no spaces. So dibs, dibs on the Southie. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. And so next we've got last but not least Daniel. Uh, so why don't this guy introduce himself and how you found Forgotten Run? Uh, I'm Daniel Cadwell. I am currently the moderator of the Galaxy's Edge Discord, and uh, I also run the Forgotten Run. Uh, fan group for for everybody. Um, yeah, I uh, I got introduced to Forgotten Rune via the insider subscription that uh, Jason and Nick offer for Galaxy's Edge. And as soon as I listened to that, I was just like, this this is like one of the most fun uh, books I've listened to recently. Um, I kind of it it's really right up there with galaxy's edge as like my favorite currently. Um, I, yeah. So we'll, we'll get into that later on, but yeah. Um, 
that's that's how I found the book. So, what about you? Go ahead. I was going to ask. So is this just a writing team where you, whenever you see it, you your you your name you cook by all? I mean, you could you say, say yeah. I just started a book today. I have no idea other than I knew who the author was, so I started it. Uh, I, I pick up uh, most of their books. There's some books that I'm just kind of like, eh, maybe not, you know. Uh, but <laughs> definitely, I, I do good. enjoy the idea of Forgotten Rune, which is D and I'm a big fan of D and I've been playing for probably the last ten years, and I don't know. That's one of my my favorite things. So when when Jason's all like U.S. Army Rangers in a D and D you know campaign, I'm just like. All right, let's see what you got. And yeah, I, I I've been loving it. All right, what about you, Nick? How did you find the Forgotten Ruin? I don't remember if it was you guys that told me about it or Walt. We'll blame Walt. He's not here. Yeah, I'm gonna blame Walt. Walt. I think it's always um, Walt's fault. You know, because uh, I'm. I'm always turned blaming, me on to the Galaxy's Edge book too. Blaming so, grandfather Walt. Um, I think he was, somebody sent me a message, and I'm pretty sure it was Walt. And he's like, hey, man, there's a new book coming out. You need to get on it. I'm like, dude, you know Rangers don't read? And he's like, they have it on Audible. I'm like, okay, what's the book? And he's like, well, I'm just going gonna, gonna to give you the premise. Rangers and Middle Earth fucking up works. All right, I'm in. Where's the link? <laughs> All right, what about you, Doc? I think I found it because you said so. Jason and Nick decided to write a fantasy. And I went, what? And you went, yeah. So they're going to write a fantasy and it's time for uh, you to read it. But fine. And I mean, nobody sold me on the premise. It was just that you should check it out. And it's okay, fine. We'll do it. <laughs> I, mean, I was really hard to convince. I can tell. All right. So really I found it. <laughs> uh, I found it through the uh, through the insider subscription, like everyone else, and uh, they gave me the early access to the audio, which was phenomenal. I think uh, the guy did a, an excellent job, and um, yeah. So, all right, so we're going to focus on several parts of the story. So, I'll give a rundown there for all you listeners, so we're all on the same page. So, we'll read the blurb or the summary. Uh, which is basically a synopsis um, straight from the back of the book. We'll discuss the characters, uh, who they are, do we like them, how they look, act, were they believable, sympathetic, or and well-rounded. We'll talk about the plot, which is a general um, idea of the story arc. Was it action-packed? Was it easy to follow? Did it lag in places? Were there parts you just didn't buy? Um, then we will look at the world building, which is how fleshed out the universe was. Did we buy it? Could we envision ourselves there, the good, the bad, and the ugly? We will talk about the description and the narrative, which is the quality of the writing itself and the um, could we visualize things. We'll look at the narration, um, which is analyzing the, uh, the narrator's contribution to the world. And then we will look at the book cover. Um, and then for those of us who see colors, we might even discuss whether we liked it, what we didn't like, what the what the art said to us. Did it speak to us? Did it make us think of weird things? I don't know. Whatever you people that look at art talk about. And then uh, we'll, we'll do an overall review. So before we do the, the summary section. If you I, want, when I do the art part and start talking about it, I can pretend uh, like I'm at a gallery showing and yeah. and do that. Yeah, we'll totally which do I, that. Which I hate. Which I hate. Uh, and you're oh. also going to read the blurb after we do this commercial here in a second. You're going to read the blurb in the movie trailer voice. All right, hold on. Where's the, is the blurb in the notes? It is. All right, but All while right. you look for that, I am going to play the commercial. Cue the money.
All right. So apparently you have to turn it off when the thing is over. Who knew? I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah. The right. would mess it up. Unfortunately, right. the the wheels, huh? on uh, Anchor FM, there was not a lot of text. Uh, there was uh, audio track for that. So check it out on um, our YouTube. All right. Yeah, that'll be available on the YouTube. Um, so we've got the movie trailer voice from the one, the only, the SAG actor, Rick, the Ranger Nick. I don't know Ranger why I said Nick, Rick. Ranger Rick. Because there was a Ranger Rick cartoon back in the day. Sure, we'll go with that. JR is very, go. very easily confused. <laughs> you like no that. It's fun. Here we go. Oh, uh, crap. Okay. Back. Just everything on the back of the book, right? Indeed. Yep. Indeed. Okay. Tolkien meets shock and awe. Orcs, trolls, wraith riders, dark wizards. Together they form an unstoppable force, or so they thought. Dark Army meet the U.S. Army Rangers. When a joint task force of elite rangers are transported to a strange and fantastic future where science and evolution have in Incarnated the evils of myth and legend, they find themselves surrounded, pinned down, and in desperate fight for their very survival against nightmares of flesh and blood made real, which means only one thing. It's time to ranger up and stack bodies. The forces of evil have no idea how dangerous a ranger has been trained to be, and once the action starts, it won't let up in this no-holds-barred, full-auto, epic battle for survival in the Forgotten Room. From the creators of Galaxy's Edge, buy in and jock up for this thrilling war gate adventure. A battle unlike any other is coming. All right. So, did we all agree that that summary uh, blurb pretty much summed up the book? I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty much hit the mark. Because that's not always true with some books. All right. So, we agree yeah. on this one. We can move on and dive mm -hmm. in deeper, and we'll try not to try not to jack it up. So, so first, someone someone in the uh, in the Discord was saying on one of the Galaxy's Edge podcasts when we were talking about. It, he said it's like. It's like taking Tolkien, putting your foot on his throat and shooting him in the head is what this book is. And I was like, you know what? I, yeah. Brutal, but yeah, true. Yeah. I'm going to take it as a positive thing, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It sounds negative, thing. but it's, it's really positive. When, when you read the book, you go, yeah, fuck, he's right. <laughs> that might be harder to do if you catch Tolkien in his prime. I mean, the man survived the psalm for crying out loud. This is true. He might have stacked bodies himself and you might be in trouble. Oh, Tolkien was a body stacker for sure. Shoot him and then stab him in the hole just to make sure for extra credit. He's that kind of guy. He seems like the type of dude that would bring like an actual sword into combat. Well, like he's the guy. He's the that. guy. He's the guy on top of the tank that's got the sword out that says, "Drive me closer. I want to hit them with my sword." <laughs> exactly. You know, what, you know what's interesting is one of them. Driver, driver, oh. get me closer. I want to prick them with this. Tolkien. So many people love Tolkien. You interrupted his voices. It did, which, uh, which is he lived through World War II and he served in World War II. I'm I'm pretty sure. No, but World War so I. did so did Rudard Kipling, who's also very well known and well liked. So it's interesting that that time produces a lot of good story and writing. World War One. Sorry, I'm I'm tired. This is the end of my day. <laughs> we understand. Then, what a way to spend it. It's All history, right. not science numbers. History numbers. All right. So we're going to talk about the characters. So who who did everyone think the main character was? Sometimes that's up for debate. Maybe not this one, but we'll go with you, Daniel. Who was the main character? Say it. Say oh, it, Dan. Wow. Say it, Dan. Talker. No, nah, just kidding. It was Jabba. There it was Jabba. <laughs> Jabba All is the main character. the moon god. The moon god. He needs to be like more of a role. They need to he add the gonna, moon god. He, needs he to is going to be more of a role. You he get, I, I can guarantee really it. good comic relief. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely the 3PO of the book. At least and he wasn't Jar Jar the Jar Jar Binks. Binks. All right, hey, Jar Jar Binks was perfectly fine. What's so wrong with is you? Is everyone in accordance that Talker was the main character? It's kind of hard yes. to get that wrong in first person, but yeah. you know, I just want to throw <laughs> that out there. He's the main character, but he's not the best character. Fair enough. That, All right. So now, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, right, so I mean, yeah. If, if he doesn't support pineapple on pizza, then he's not the best character. There pineapple it on is. pizza is heresy. You get your filthy mind. All that right, is so what chaos. You like everyone? pineapple on pizza? No fly list. <laughs> <laughs> All That's right, two so strikes, Dan. Two strikes two from strikes. the ranger. 
<laughs> All right, so uh, we'll Let's see if I can get three by the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, we'll I have anything, you, buddy. You can do it. We'll start with you, Archangel. So, what did you think of Talker? I liked his development, like him learning how to ranger more as the book went on from him just being the linguist guy that went through the accelerated course and was the, the smart guy of the group. He, you know, he, he opened himself and he opened up with, you know, Rangers aren't stupid. They're, they're incredibly intelligent and they just like to they've got a plan to kill everybody in the room. Yeah. Because that's the Ranger way, you know, and Rangers going to range Rangers going to range. Yeah. And Talker's fine. development of just him him becoming more to steal a phrase from another more KTF was just it was perfect. I, I loved his development how it how it all wrapped up there at the end. Okay, uh, what about you, Sparky? What did you think? Uh, I liked Talker in the sense that he was still he was he was a man out of his element yeah he was shehorned into this operation and and given advanced training and it which is great for the reader because you know if you're not in the military or if you've never been in a world full of uh D, &D monsters you can really be in his shoes and, and see things as they develop as he would you know what i mean and his development and and evolution through the story is really fascinating and i think relatable to a lot of readers all right i okay what about uh what about you so we've done talker um uh, what about you nick uh what are we talking about talker okay still about talker yeah um an accelerated rasp or rip it's called rasp now they definitely mention it but in the book but it's still gonna be a nut kicker so it's it's not gonna be a cakewalk you know, I think what it, you said it was half the time. So usual rasp is like eight weeks. This was done in like a month, but I'm sure he got his teeth kicked in every damn day through that course. Um, I like that he was that super smart guy. Like he was too smart to be there, you know? So um, hearing everything through his viewpoint um, and how he overanalyzed everything, like every little thing, um, his descriptions of what was going on. And also I really like uh, PFC Kennedy too. Um, we'll get there. Yeah. Oh, we'll get there because every unit has that's one of those Kennedy. guys and has a Kennedy. Um, that's how I got into D and D was because of a guy like that in, in the Ranger regiment. So they're out there. They do exist. No, uh, Tucker was a great character. He was um, just hearing his analysis, analysis on everything and how he kind of like if you never served or you know you didn't do anything really super high speed he broke these things down to you barney style you know the tactics that they were using the weapon systems that they were using um it was it was a great character um liked it all right what about you dan try to uh get your third strike early uh <laughs> On, on how we think of Talker, right? Yeah, what was your opinion on Talker? Was he a flushed out character? Was he believable? Did you like him? I, I thought he was a pretty well-balanced character in the sense that, you know, he he didn't seem like uh, like a, a, a Gary Sue, as, as some may say. Um, I, I felt like he, he did grow and progress throughout the story. And, you know, it... He, he felt believable as opposed to in some, you know, stories I've read where the character is just like the, the perfect character for every situation. And uh, there's never anything that challenges that character. And yeah, and that, that, I mean, it's, it's fun and all for a while, but it does kind of get boring. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you need to have something to actually challenge a character and make them grow and, and change as opposed to just being the same thing over and over again. Uh, so yeah, that's my take on, on talker. All right. What about you, doc? What did you think of talker? I like talker, but I think there are a couple points where, um, Nick and Jason, well, Nick was a vet, is a vet, sorry, but he served a while ago. Nobody going in with that much education these days is going to go in as a private. They're going to go in as an E4. 
He's well, going did, to college. He went in as an E4, right? No. Yeah. No. Uh, he, was, he, was, he was private first class. The whole PFC. Story. Yeah, he's PFC talker. Huh. Yeah, no. If you go in with that much education, you go in as a specialist. Okay, so here's the deal. And that's right. Right. Unless, and I unless Nick's concept and reason behind it, but it's stupid. Oh, no. See, Nick Nick was sharing with you an inside thing inside the Ranger Regiment. Okay, so no. if you don't have your tab and you're an E4, you don't wear E4. You wear PFC. But that is not explained to the reader. No, How it about? isn't. And I wish he probably would have explained. And if, if he had he said that even on the last one, I probably would have been like, okay, as long as they're still cutting an E4 paycheck, we'll call it good. Yeah. I mean, I served with a lot of guys that were, they were specialists, but they, they wouldn't dare pin on that rank until they got their tab. Yeah. That's the, that's the difference between a normal unit and a special operations unit. Yeah. And you see, know, but, now, I, so I, I want to raise, I want to raise, I want to raise one of the children. Why, why does it matter if he's re receiving an E4 paycheck, given that we're going into the ruin and nobody yeah, gets paid anyways? <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. That's your mentality, and that's but fine. That's, because... But we're talking about, like, back when they were at Area 51, before yeah. they found yeah. out about this yeah. trip. Yeah. You know, they didn't know he was off the rails. And before they right. realized it was, like, a one-way one ticket to Tolkienville versus yeah. United States. Yeah. Um, but, I mean... That, that I will admit, that was like the one thing with Talker that really kept throwing me kind of out at points because I was in, and I, I will admit, I was a college specialist. And, um, but, and I was also medical. And there was one other thing where I'm like, uh, they don't really do that in medical. So, um, so there, but those were really it. But one of my favorite lines in the book is actually from Talker. And, um, but I don't want to get into that. We can get into it later. Is it the but Spartan, yeah. the Spartan quote? No. No. That, Actually, that was my favorite one. When I, I, as soon as I read that, I was like, so I gotta write that down. That's badass. The, the, the Spartan quote is good, but one of my favorite lines, uh, and it kind of shows a matter of perspective, I guess. And as a female vet, it really hit home. Mm -hmm. was when there's a point where they have a combat scene. It's kind of a dungeon crawl book, so it's not a big surprise. So I'm trying not to give away any spoilers, but there is a female and that he goes, that's our sister. We need to help her because she was getting overrun in her position. And she was doing a good job. She was being complete badass and he recognized that. But the mentality of that is our sister. That's like the whole book is them getting overrun. <laughs> I understand that, but I'm trying to like say like, that's probably really one of right. the things where I really liked that mentality and that's what, as a female soldier, that's what we want to have from our coworkers yeah. and our brothers in arms. Fair enough. So to answer Nick, uh, what when we interviewed uh, Nick Cole, he specifically said, "If you well, you, we might not remember because not everybody was sober, and you I kind remember. of had to watch it again to get all of it." But I was. I watched it. I might remember. Yeah. But um, oh, so the explanation he gave was that he hid that information because he didn't want to go in as an E4 so he could do his thing. That but, was stupid. But they, they specifically recruited him for those educations. So that was where it was a little bit of a mismatch. What you were talking about would have been a perfectly acceptable thing. And you'd be like, meh, okay, move on. Yeah. Um, well, but, you have you have another like kind of trope like that too. Um, and I'm starting to see it in a lot of mill sci-fi books, especially Forgotten Ruin, like with Talker's um, education and his um, and his background and everything. Uh, like uh, the War's Edge series that's coming out by Ryan Aslison. Same kind of concept. Highly educated guy um, wants to do something different with his life and takes his education, puts it to the wayside, and wants to serve. And I, I, I kind of get well. It's like from. I told you I guys about that surgeon that came in as an E four in an infantry platoon. I you know? I I went into the army with a degree in health science as a medic. I get it, and it exists, but you got to explain away some of it because the only person I ever knew who tried to convince me that they turned down the rank of specialist because they wanted to learn how to soldier before becoming a specialist was in a complete toxic ass wipe. All right. So moving on, let's uh, talk about other toxic ass wipes. I mean, secondary characters. <laughs> so, AKA J.R. Hanley. You are, yeah. I'm a tertiary That's character. Dirty. All right. So who was your favorite secondary character if you had one? We'll start with you this time, Dan. Why do you ask the obvious thing when I'm going to say, obviously, Jabba? Jabba is just like story. everything. Jabba's if good. you open the book and you don't see Jabba, it's a bad page and it must be ripped out. 
That is so <laughs> and, and the narrator killed it Robert, too. Love of coffee reminded me of Jr. I do love me some coffee. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what about you, Mister Archangel? I mean, I really, up. I really want to say Java. I really do because I was like, this sucks for them. I'm very upset for them. This is not good. Oh, here's Java, and the narrator killed it. And I was like, this is this is the greatest experience that, I've ever had listening to a book. Awesome. Um, honestly, though, it would like if you could group the rest of the Rangers and Talker. Like you have Talker as the main character. I would say the inter like the interactions between the rest of the Ranger Regiment was my favorite secondary character plot line. Like, okay. all of them. Okay. What about you, Sparky? Uh, boy. You people put the pressure on me to go with Jabba, but... Uh, oh, God. One of us. I really liked Kurtz and uh, Captain Knifehand both. They just... They were just yeah. so badass. And... and I want them to be my spirit animal. As much hatred as they had to put down range and get the job done, they are just inspiring. It was awesome. All right. And so, Doc, we asked Nick last time, so now it's your turn to go first. Who was your favorite secondary character? I am really torn between... No. <laughs> Uh, Java only steals the show because the audio narrator really put it, did that. That really dude well. nailed it. He, he nailed, nailed it. it. It was great. It was glorious. I'm not sure I would have enjoyed it as much in a book format. Um, yeah, I probably would have. I can't do Java. that kind of voice so well in my head. Um, this is why I'm not crazy. It made me need him. Um, Ish. <laughs> Last of Autumn, it, who is the elf guide that shows up and helps them. She's pretty badass. And then I also adore Sergeant Thor and Santiago just makes me crack up. And yeah. I knew it told your soul like Santiago that it really, I, I guess that's why I like him is because he reminds me of somebody I knew in the art. Every, every time I heard Nobody him speak, I wanted Olive Garden. And that's not good for a fat guy. Don't. No, you just want Olive Garden. Who doesn't want Olive Garden? That sounds delicious, actually. <laughs> All right, fair I enough. I want Olive Garden. So what about you? Autumn is amazing. And so um, secondary characters, um, Staff Sergeant Thor. Uh, he, when he explained why he was why his religion was Viking, just so he could grow the beard, that was the most ranger thing I'd ever fucking heard in my life. <laughs> I, I was jealous because I didn't think of it. Like I could have changed my religion just so I didn't have to shave without a profile. That was oh amazing. my oh, lord, he, wasn't a thing until recently. When he when he's what? telling Tiger that, and I'm like. This this dude is the A one epitome of an actual ranger, you know. <laughs> As a ranger would do that, I'd be like, man, I really hate shaving, but I want to get a shaving profile because profiles make you look like you're weak, you know. So he's like, no, it's my religion. I'm a Viking, you know. So, <laughs> so and DA a, signed off and goes, well, he's Viking. I'm gonna let grow a beard. That is a more recent. Um, regulation change, and I will say this one as a pagan, I like the fact that he actually got into the religion afterwards, and the otherwise, yeah. otherwise it would have been kind of offensive, if that makes well, sense. Well, and I think that was probably one of the coolest parts about the character, is that, um, to keep it believable, you know, his, you know, that he was this, he did dive more into the religion, and actually just became a full convert, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, it kind of happens like that. I, I really um, like that, that's what I like about him, so. But Kennedy, uh, PFC Kennedy is my second favorite because he is what we would call a sham ranger. You know, that, yeah, I, I've been that kid, part of it, you know. So, like, and a lot of those characters, I'm like, oh, man, that was that was Taylor in Third Platoon. Or, you know, this was um, some other guy I knew in another company in the Ranger Regiment. You know, that was the coolest thing about a lot of the, uh, the secondary characters and how they had interacted is like i felt like i was back in the bat you know doing doing cool guy shit and you know with my friends doing hood rat shit with my buddies fair enough so for me go ahead dan what were you gonna say i'm a little surprised and nobody likes soprano and the fact that he he just has sticky fingers what soprano what? is good i mean we know walt okay. personally why yeah. would we pick him in this book <laughs> <laughs> nick will neither confirm nor deny that yeah. though yeah but, but, but soprano soprano no, is that was a, a lot smaller that was, straight up. <laughs> that was walt 
I mean, where do you? Because uh, you got you got Soprano as Walt, the cycle and then dog. and then you also have the Perpetual Taco Machine, which was from Walt. <laughs> and and don't forget, don't forget the uh, what was it the chlorine uh, body bag uh, bombs? That was Walt too. <laughs> All right, so for for me, I was I was all about PFC Kennedy because I was sort of that that nerd who was too smart to be there when I was in the light infantry unit. No uh, way, it's not quite, JR, I know you're going to be shocked, but I like <laughs> I was the guy that were like, you got a 94 in your ass, but what the hell are you doing in the infantry? JR, but I, was that's what they asked me. I got a 92 on the ass, bad. They wanted I, me to I, do in-flight I, missile repair, which I said was stupid. Why would I do that? Why? Okay, one second. To be honest, the highest average GT score is it, MOS is in the infantry. The infantry has the highest average GT score. I have a so, 127 so, GT score. Smart people like to blow shit up. It's fair enough. That's why I told the recruiter. What do you want to do in the army? I want to jump out of planes and shoot people in the face and blow shit up and not go to jail for it. They're like, oh, I got, we got a, we got a unit for you, buddy. All right. So now let's move on and talk about the bad guys. So who are, who are the bad guys in this one? We're going to go with you, Sparky. Who do you think the bad guys were? Uh, well, clearly uh, McCluskey. I mean, for once, we get a bad guy who's a Navy SEAL, and not it, it, this only happened because McCluskey wasn't able to print his own book before this one. That's it. So, sure, this otherwise, he would have been, been he would have been the star of his own book and defeating the evil Rangers. But you know, the Rangers <laughs> beat him to punch this time. <laughs> but, All right, you know, fair enough. Always punch you SEALs. Put a SEAL. You show them a dolphin. <laughs> Fair enough. What you about you, Arcane? Ball. No, you throw him a ball. Yeah. Didn't so, like did wasn't there even a line that Talker said that said, Oh, well, you know, he's only here because his PR guys got him into it. Yeah. The whole, the whole yeah. <laughs> and it's I mean, it's true. Have you read any SEAL books? Come on. So, one of the, so you, one you one agree of the, the SEAL was the bad guy? I think I read a book um, by a SEAL. I can't. I can't remember was his it name. Moist? I can't remember his name. Like the guy that um, that they were saying was the evil guy that came down from the heavens or whatever on a meteor. Um, that's that's interesting. I mean, I'm sure he's the guy pulling the strings. So I would think he's the big bad guy. But for like the immediate, yeah, McCluskey. You know I, I just had a thought about the meteor thing. What if the meteor is actually the International Space Station that's coming down and they managed to survive that. survive up there for like centuries and then they're like, All right, let's Whoa. go take over. They done no, fucked everything up. No, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be Nick and Jason going, by the way, we also wrote this other series called Galaxy's Edge. So <laughs> that meteor was a savage hulk. <laughs> This or, doesn't work that way. It can't work that way because we already have the Nomad series. Don't you get me started on Galaxy's Edge. <laughs> All, right. All right, stop. Maybe. Oh, no. stop. No. No. We got to herd the cats. So, Dan, did you agree uh, <laughs> that uh, the seal was the bad guy? Or do you think uh, it was the environment? What, what do you think? Uh, I think the seal was the bad guy, but if I remember right in the book... Isn't the dragons the one that have the power essentially? Because um, it's alluded to dragon a, one singular. Well, well, that no, they, 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 they ref, the elves refer to another dragon or whatever. I don't know if it's yes. the same one. So that's that's why I'm I'm kind of wondering if the dragons actually have more of a uh, control over things, and McCluskey's just kind of like you know. A middleman, but then again, it's the first book. We're gonna find out more in the second book. So what what um, I'm hearing is because there was a dragon, it makes it a fantasy novel. I'm, I'm oh, digging. Yeah, this. it's like it's no, like it's a fantasy no, novel or something. No, that's not how that works. There's <laughs> magic. Magic. What's what makes it a fantasy novel? Not dragons. That's what do you think, Nick? Who, 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 who I, I your think you, bad guy? It's a fantasy novel. It's very clearly fantasy. Just stop it, Jr. No, fantasy novels have to have a dragon. Everybody knows this. I don't even know why you're talking. Yeah, magic. They have to have. Hey, hey what is it called? Is it called Dungeons and Magic or Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> but dragons don't about make that? necessarily fantasy, and you don't see the dragon in the book, anyways. 
All right. So yeah, actually, you do see the dragon book, but you know that's later. Yeah. At the well, end. The end. Did you finish? Did you, there, McCoy, did you, like, you, did you even read the book? Okay. 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 I'm gonna have to I don't spoil it, you. but <laughs> that yeah. Nick. Carl Gustav. Yeah. Don't care. Yell at all of you for talking over me. Now I need the Jason on Spock dad, a disappointed dad face. But oh, I got that. I'll race you. I'll race you, Nick. Ah, who did ah, you think? Who did you think the bad guy was? <laughs> Oh, it's always Seals. I don't even care if he was the good guy in the book. I still would have thought he was a bad guy. We're sorry, Jason. Sorry, Dad, if you're listening. I got to talk shit about your your beloved teams. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Doc, you, you going with the Seal, or do you think it was something else? Was Rich it the dragon? That... Was it the dragon that you don't remember? <laughs> yeah. I will pull all of you in your sleep. Did it, did um, it use magic? I thought JR did. was the only one that had like brain thing. No, no, no. I all of Everybody oh, knows nice. that information falls out of my head when I sleep onto my pillow. Um, I tell everybody the dragon combat. Podcast. Uh, <laughs> so I, it's definitely. I think the seal is a boss. He's not like he's a boss. He's a mid-level villain. Hmm, so there's somebody clearly pulling the strings above him. Because seals follow orders. Sorry, Mike Massa. I love you anyway. But um you tell them that they don't know. <laughs> so as much as you know, yeah, no, the seal is definitely like a mid-level upper management boss. He's not the boss boss. All right. So I thought uh I thought the same thing. I kind of felt like the dragon is gonna show up and be the, the bigger boss. Um oh yeah. I definitely, definitely felt that dragon time. The uh, the oh, environment. Oh, you remember the dragon? I think the environment with all you know of the children. children, children. I think the environment oh, with all of the orcs and the the uh, the various horde of of baddies also qualify. Um, just like you know, fodder for the cannon because Carl Gustav don't care. Oh, God! I love that weapon system. <laughs> all right, so now we are going to transition while he takes a moment. <laughs> Damn. You need a moment in your bunk. You can be okay. I, I think I can hold Why on not? to the end of this, but I, I just want to tell you that the Carl Gustav is a beautiful piece of death incarnate. <laughs> uh, it's four decibels lower than the space shuttle launching when it goes off. It's got a variety of mess up your oh. day rounds. Uh, if I could marry an inanimate I'm object, it'd be the Carl G. I never got and, to shoot and, it, and, but I did get to see it fired, and it was glorious. For, mm, for I, just what I, think of, I just think of Patrick Stewart in. Ted going, it is an impressive piece of death. <laughs> for, for what I can say uh, about what I know about Nick so far, I guarantee you he's not wearing pants right now, and it's the pants would just be impeding things. <laughs> pants. All right, so, losers. so now we're going to talk about our family friendly writing. <laughs> that ship sailed a while ago. So now we're going to talk about the plot. Does. We broke that ceiling last episode with KC. Oh, God. All I right, so moment. what did you think of the arc of the story without giving any spoilers? And we will start with Dan this time. Dan is going to be the man. What did you think of the plot? I thought the plot was fantastic. Uh, pretty good pacing. Uh, the uh, I, I liked how it introduced characters. It didn't feel like they rushed in new characters. And then, because I've had that issue. Yeah, it, it's it's organic, and I, I've had that issue with other stories where it's just like you're getting to the the tail end of things, and then all of a sudden it's just like, oh, and here's this important character, and they're being introduced in the last I don't know 15 minutes of whatever it is that you're you know media you're consuming, and it's just like, well, that's stupid, you know. So I, I felt a lot of the characters had the, the, the proper buildup for, you know, being in, introduced. Uh, I, I liked how, like, for instance, they were coming up on the uh, a witch's cabin and stuff. And, you know, it, it had a natural, you know, hey, this is what we have to worry about kind of thing. And, you know, just going up to that cabin was, was pretty cool. Um, I Yeah, I felt... Overall, the, the story was great. Um, I did like how it, uh, Talker would go back and uh, relive kind of some, some memories for just getting prepped for everything. You know, how he talked about 
he spent that time in Vegas with uh, with the uh, secret agent dude and, you know, learning techniques and stuff like that. I, I thought that was nice to go back and, you know, have that uh, other side of the coin kind of uh, feel, you know. All right. So what about you, Sparky? What did you think of the plot? Uh, for me, it was like a, a survival story. I mean, yeah, it was constant battle from end to end. And it was, it was fascinating to, to see how those events had impacted Talker and those around him. And it, it was very vivid. The descriptions of the battles and everything, I mean, they grabbed you and they put you there in the the muck with the, with the rangers on the firing lines. And it, it was a simple, straightforward, you know, balls to the wall story. It didn't have to be overly comp complicated, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, it just hit all the notes for me. It, was really good. It, it, it did it, it. It did the job that it needed to do. Get them from point A to point B. All right. What about you, Billy? Um, I like they said. I mean, the pacing was great. Um. The introductions were well done. It was structured really, really well to keep you interested. Um, even whenever they were going into what you might consider sometimes some boring details like unnecessary backstory or when you can say, oh, this is obviously filler to get your word count up. Um, I didn't really see a lot of that. Everything, you know, everything was relevant and everything at some point came back. Like some innocuous detail that was brought up showed up, you know, eight or 10 chapters down the road, but it showed up and it made you go, Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I remember them talking about that. And you're like, Oh shit, that was pretty good. Okay. I got it. So the overall development I thought was just absolutely perfect. I mean, in, in this book, even if it had been poorly written, I mean, it, it pretty much hits on all of my favorite notes for a book, like everything I've wanted. So, I mean, I know it, at, at some point in our life, all of us have gone, you know, it'd be cool. Take a 240 Bravo back to the Revolutionary War and see how much fun that would be. That's this. Mm -hmm. That's this. That's, yes. I, mean, I mean, it's perfect. I mean, how many times have you watched Lord of the Rings, like the Battle of Helm's Deep, and like, I wonder what it'd be like if the Defenders had a few machine guns on that wall. A couple, M1, a couple a M134s. Couple of juices up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah couple, oh. Oh. You know, two or three A10s on station. Let's, let's get this party started, fellas. Orcs ain't got shit on us. You know, so this was this was one thirty on hot standby. Oh, forget about ooh, it. Ooh, huh. Yeah, let's turn the camera back off. I'm gonna have to turn my this. camera off. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just this, this is why you need Sati to make sure the weather's just right for the for the steel love. <laughs> you guys are all animal <laughs> sexual. Tell. Don't judge. We all have all iPhones right. or smartphones. We can tell Forever. the weather's through there. All right, Doc. What did you think of the plot? I like the plot. I mean, it is very much a, it starts off really strongly as just a straight up dungeon crawl. It drops short. you right in it. And that's, that's not bad. I think it's a great, like I, I was talking to a friend, I went, uh, it's a great pandemic read because it's a fun read. There's humor in it. Oh, you got to tell me what that word means. What? Whatever you, whatever that long one you just said, pen, ten, 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 ten what? He doesn't, he doesn't know what a panda is. Oh, no. Okay, no mind. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm like, I thought you were not stupid. Um, <laughs> Nobody's. Well, they actually, he was a smart man, and then he went to become an officer, and they sucked his brain out. It was a messy procedure. Oh, no, 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 so, so, That's what made me successful. Oh, uh, so he was he was the guy that was in Starship Troopers. Yes. All right, so that is a well-thought-out answer. Thank you for your time, Doc. Now, Nick, you get to answer after we – Oh, strike four for Daniel. Did it! Starship Troopers is a bad movie. Strike three, great five. <laughs> Why do you okay. say these things when you know Godfather I Godfather Walt is going to kill you. Oh. How dare all of you, Daniel? How dare you? If I had pearls, I would clutch them right now. Good sir. <laughs> get in the case of the papers. <laughs> Guys, I can get a kidnap van and we can get take care of Daniel later. I mean, all right. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Wait, 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 wait. Kidnap. Kidnap. There's a zip code near him that I can get to. <laughs> Fair enough. 
we will we will deal with that later off air. Uh, so there's no incriminating evidence. And in the meantime, uh, Nick, what what did yeah. you think of the plot? It is Rangers in Middle Earth kicking ass wholesale. What's not the love? It is it's shit we used to talk about in the barracks, you know, in one PFC's room because you know being a fantasy fan or sci-fi fan back in those days of the regiment uh, was frowned upon, you know. So, but at least you nerds. Your muscle clean. Fucking, what are you guys talking about, you fucking nerds? Well, we were talking and it about was last arm, but I digress. It was just a conversation between the two rangers. Yeah, I think I'd kick an orc's ass. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you always have one. I'm like, I don't know. We have Schmidt in the platoon, and he's about the size of an orc, and he played football for Arizona State, and – this guy just walks past me fast enough, he'll knock me over. Because at the time, I was like 163 pounds soaking wet, you know. Like, no, I know for a fact in that conversation, but like, no, I, an elf maybe. I could probably, I could probably kick a, an elf's ass, but an orc, no. I, I'm gonna need the, I'm gonna need the 240 for that. Fair enough. I, I, I thought the uh, the pacing was was pretty on point. They were just a, yeah. But, you know, weeb's gonna weeb. Um, so. I think the the pacing for the plot was was on point. I found it, the story idea compelling, and there were just enough lulls in the action, so you didn't feel like, oh my god, I need a breather. Um, so I thought the pacing and the plot were were on point. It let you catch your breath is yeah. what I really enjoyed about it. Um, yeah, because it was like when we were talking about it earlier, it's like yeah, they were constantly being overran. Which part are you talking about? You know, that was the all right. Part. So Maybe now we're going. Give time to catch your breath. Now we're going to talk, speaking of catching our breath, we're going to take a deep breath and we're going to talk about the description in the world building. We sort of combine those because there's a lot of overlap and we don't want to repeat ourselves. So, uh, Billy, what did you think? About the world building? Yes. <laughs> um, sorry, I was... This whole this whole right side of my screen is just degrading rapidly. Um, and it's getting worse. Awesome. Thanks, Nick. So, um, world building and description... Uh, well done, well done. Um, generally, the 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 fact that they've already got maps out, like an interactive map, and we get a description of what the ruin looks like ten thousand years in the future. Um, it's really well done. It plays on a lot of. Um, it it gives you an idea of what ten thousand years really is, because there's nothing around. It's just it's forest. You know, Mother Nature has reclaimed man's fuckery for lack of a better term and you know ranger alamo the island itself you know it, it really gives you an idea for the scale um their trek through to the to the elves house or their their home their cave um it, it gives you again an idea for the scale you see that this is in fact still earth it's it's where we live but it's just it's it's wild and it's savage and the overall development um, the description of the dungeon, the description of the the keep, um, everything was just so detailed and on point. I I really really can't wait to see what comes next from them. Wait, Hidden Run's the next book, right? Uh, Hit and Fade. fade. Hit and Fade. Yeah. Sorry, Hit and Fade. Yeah, you got Hit and Fade, and, and then you have um, the third book is Violence of Action. Yeah, of course. All right. What about you, Sparky? What do you think of the world building and the plot? Uh, I thought we were talking about the plot. Beforehand, but uh, world, no, 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 the world building and description. Oh, okay. Uh, like I said before, the des description of the world and, and the events and actions very on point. Uh, a friend of mine summed it really well that it reminded him of the uh, the Warhammer uh, Gone's Ghost novels, and it really is as far as the battle scenes, but as far as the world building, they were doing a really good job of it. Like I said, you know, building this world from the perspective of people. Who may not be D and D, you know, nerds or even fantasy nerds. They're, you know, they're kind of drip. It's drip fed to you for the eyes of talker and and you know they're borrowing. Yeah, you know, a bit from D and D, a bit from Tolkien, but they're bringing together in new and different ways, and it, and it's refreshing. It's refreshing to see a lot of those concepts and, and tropes used in different manners. I really liked it, and I like where they're building too and like uh, daniel said or sorry archangel said you know that the map they brought out you know they have so much potential then go so far i can't wait to see how they expand on this world even further because 
they've got off to a really good start. All right, Dan, try not to mess this up. What am I not messing up? World, uh, world building and description. Uh, yeah, I, fe I felt they accurately described things uh, as opposed to uh, Doc, who who was uh, bothered by the fact that he was a private first class, you know. <laughs> but you know, yeah. that's that's. <laughs> I, I mean I'm I'm smooth I'm no, smooth I'm, getting hung up on the details. Had a good I'm smooth brain enough that I can understand the plot and be happy. So yeah, I, I felt it was uh it was well described and there wasn't any point where I was confused by anything and no. it was just a uh, very fun uh story to enjoy. All right, what about you, Doc? The world building? Uh, I loved it actually. I thought they did it. No, I was going to say world building and descriptive language that they use. Yeah, no, I think they did a good job of descriptive. I like that they pulled from not just straight up European uh, in it. So you have some of the, the Russian kind of um, the, the like the Russian witch at one point. Um, I don't think they make her Russian, but that's definitely where it originated from. And as well as you see some of the both and I like it because they pulled it in, not just into pulling from the myth, but they pulled from the languages also that weren't just straight up pure European, such as Korean and um, and Russian. And I really enjoyed that. I thought it was super good. And it was a great detail because those cultures would migrate over time somewhat. All right. And finally, last but not least, Nick, what did you think? Suck, I hated it. All right. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, what was the question with like by the time it gets to me, like my I'm like, what his 80 no. games passes out. It, I did. Okay. We have this chat going on. It's pretty pretty entertaining. It's clearly not safe for work chat on the side. Um oh, thank so, God they can't see that. Yeah. What did you think of the uh the description and the world building um in the novel? No, I thought it, I thought it was really cool. Um and it's it's written in such a way that it caters to the vet community. And like, like, and if you're not a vet, if you're, you're just maybe tipping your toes in the water of not only fantasy, but now mill fantasy, my fantasy, um, you know, you can follow along, you know, what's going on, you know, you, it, it's, it's very descriptive and, and how they write it and what's going on and the, the tactics that they're using, the weaponry that they're using, um, it, it, it takes you by the hand and leads you without kind of feeling uh, condescending or patting you on the head like, oh, of course you're feeling you're not going to understand this book here. Let me walk you through this, you know, wonderful realm of just carnage and savagery. So, no, I, I, I think they did a very, very good job in that. And it's not surprising coming from these guys. All right. So I, I agree. I thought that they did a good job of describing everything. I, I hate the modern trend to, that less is more when it comes to description. If I can read a novel and not have a clue what anybody looks like, like I've got a problem with that. And I didn't have that problem. Um, so like for me, I, I like the Tolkien style of describing every blade, blade of glass, grass. Whoa, can't speak much tonight. I promise I'm so excited. I'm running but, off uh, on you. Yeah, but I, I do like the, the amount of description. I think... Why are you nice rubbing off on them? We're in public. That's rude. We don't oh judge God, you. They haven't put you off. <laughs> All right, so I don't to act. Mm, these kids. That's so like we're hurting I cats. Heard I think. Now we get to talk about the fun part. Since we all sounds like we all listen, let's talk about the narrator. We've got Christopher Ryan Grant, the uh, the new breakout star. So what did everyone think of him? We're going to start with you this time, Dan. You're going to start out with me. <laughs> Uh, oh, I, thought, I, thought, I thought he was a fantastic talker. Um, he he made but he I'm actually fit the character really well. So I I yeah I, I was happy with that. Um, <laughs> you just got it. You just got it, didn't you? I uh, no, I I just created something cursed, and I'm I'm. I, I so saw I bad. saw a hint of that, and I feel like it was a little bit of Jason in a gift form, and I'm upset with you. But we'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> right, so let's talk to the book. In the chat. Right, certain things are don't ask, don't tell. Let's go. We're talking about oh, a book, yeah. so we're talking about the narrator. So you thought he was a great talker. Uh, what do you think of his portrayal of some of the other voices, like the infamous Jabba? 
Uh, oh, Jabba was fantastic. I mean, the the way that he actually, you know, um, got that character all figured out and stuff, and I, I I felt like it was it was perfectly blended with uh, with what Nick and Jason envisioned Jabba to be. So yeah, no, ten out of ten. All right, what about you, Sparky? I have not listened to the audio version yet. I'm a very bad person and should go to bed without dinner tonight, but it's on my to-do list. You don't have dinner. You, I'm a reader. We'll feed you dinner, but it's going to be 10 spankings with the paddle. All right, we're not that kind of show. So, Billy, <laughs> what about you? What do you think of the narrator? The narrator was really good. Um, I I really enjoyed him reading that book. It was It was just everything was on point. All of his voices – weren't exaggerated. Um, he didn't try too hard to do like Last of Autumn's voice. Um, he didn't try and make it a feminine voice. He's just like, okay, I'll just change my voice a little bit and I'll, I'll deliver these lines. And it worked out. Um, and just the, the difference. And, oh, God, that's, that's a very large picture of Daniel. <laughs> you didn't see anything. Not in the way we want. That's so I wasn't frightening. Quick enough. I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> Anyway, ah, continue. Scary. Um, no, he did really good. I'd like to see, um, or I'd like to hear uh, his other works if he does more. You know, I'm I'm excited for that. All right, and uh, Nick, you? I, 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 what's the narrator's name again? Because he was Christopher. Um, Christopher, Wa- Christopher Christopher Ryan Grant. Grant. Christopher Ryan Grant. Uh, he dude was top notch. You know, um, the voices that he had for. Uh, for pretty much everybody was kind of, it was very similar to what I would have been hearing in my head had I been reading the text. Um, Java was definitely, I remember messaging you guys. I'm like, and now I've got to Java and I really like this dude, but I kind of want to stab him in the throat. So, and give him a Coke probably before I stab him. Give him a Coke. But give him a Coke. But no, I think, I think he did a great job. Um, it was a very good voice. I mean, even though I was running them at like 1.5 speed, you know, because it was taking forever, you know, on the, the regular speed. I'm like, Jesus, this is taking forever. And you're like, you know, you can speed that up. And I'm like, no, because I'm stupid. But no, the, the narration was great. Um, I loved how he gave everybody a little bit, you know, gave, gave them a voice, you know. So and he, and he was able to go back to him real quick. You know, that's hard for a lot of people that um, are doing voices is to sometimes they have to find that that point to get back to. And he didn't have to do that. It was just seamless as he was going. But I, I, I want more Java. I want more Java readings. So we know they're listening. So Jason, Nick, write in more Java. Maybe give him his own novel. That would be yes. Cool. No, I don't know if he deserves his own like novel or spinoff. Yes. I feel like that would just he be cool the car to the narrator. Like that would just be mean to Christopher Grant. It's like, all right, Whoa. so we have a new book for you. It is one hundred percent Jabba. It is all narrated right. by Jabba. It is told from his perspective, and it is his entire life story. <laughs> by the way, they live to be about four hundred years old, so it's a thick book. And he this would just right. go. This is where I get my favorite phrase from a TV show: "You son of a bitch." I'm in. Uh, I actually know an author who deliberately picks accents in part just to make his narrator cry. (laughs) That's evil and I approve. So what's Robert Roth for you? That is some corporal level just infamy and evilness. I love it. He likes to make Nick Podell do all kinds of weird things with his voice. It's funny. Uh, Well, I mean, I I can read a book and do voices. Give me a call. I like Mm. like evil things. I mean, what? Uh, Speaking of evil things, Doc, what do you think of the narration? I really think he did a good job. It, the, the narration, um, particularly for Last of Autumn, was really good because it didn't, like, I, he, you know, he went, I'm not going to do a female voice. I, I'm not that good. But it felt like it was Talker trying to, you know, do a female voice as he's, and then she said this. And um, so earlier I referred to, Soprano is Santiago because that's actually the soldier he reminded me of. And I loved the accent for that character as well. Hey, Soprano. Hey, hey. I loved him. Yeah, no. Is he from Jersey? Really good. I think I so. Know. Is he from Jersey? I yeah. He is. It made me smile. There's always, um, there's always a Soprano in a platoon, too. I swear to God. So, yeah. I, I uh, really dug his voice. Um, I, I wasn't sure because. 
I've uh, when they said that they got him as the narrator, I checked him out and he had narrated some like political manifesto stuff. So I listened to that and it was such dry reading, although it would take a lot to make that interesting. It's one of the government billion page reports that it took like a dozen narrators to do kind of thing. Uh, and so when I, I listened to that, I'm like, yeah, mm, I don't know. And then they sent us the copy of, cause they, when you bought the, when you pre-ordered the, the audio, they gave you the file right away. So you didn't have to wait. And so I started listening. I'm like, son of a bitch. I like it. And, uh, and I was hooked. And then when he did Java, I was like laughing. So it was awesome. Um, I definitely think they need more just so we can hear that voice. Although I guess much like a good thing of Jar Jar Binks, it might get old after a while. I don't know. I don't think so, man. That's going to be my new drunk voice. <laughs> so we'll know wife. when you're drunk on the podcast? Huh? Huh? So we'll know when you're drunk yes. on the podcast? Or your well, I, I, I really think I should differentiate because I can hide it so well. Like, I could be, well, except for the slurred speech and my eyes bloodshot and um, me making inappropriate comments where everyone gets mad at us. So um, wait, you're drunk right now? No. See, I could be <laughs> Yeah. All right. So we're yet, I'm working on it, but Jesus, we're going to talk about. I'm on a five day weekend. Like my liver can only take four out of the five days. Tomorrow's definitely a recovery day. You getting old, buddy? Yeah, you ain't kidding. It's not the years, though, honey. It's the mileage. All right. So let's what talk about the. You what went rough and hung up wet? Uh, we're not talking about who rode what. Like really right? We're <laughs> talking about the cover. So, Sparky, what did you think of the cover? I like the cover. I mean, it, it it paints the exact picture you need. It's a fantasy looking castle with a uh, ranger on the front cover with a carbine and fully kitted out. I mean, their, their artist is really good and the, the covers that are coming, they definitely hit gold with this artist, in my opinion. All right. What about you, Dan? Uh, the cover was re really fitting. I, I liked how it has, you know, a blend of the Rangers uh, in their their normal getup with the, uh, the the torch off to the side. It it, it looks really cool. I uh, was a big fan of the animated uh, one that somebody <laughs> did, where it's got the the flame. It looks really cool. Um, yeah, I saw that one. That was pretty cool. Looking looking back at the uh, the trailer that was made. I, I, I do want to see how they implement uh, or or get choppers, if that's even a thing, or if that was just an art asset that they kind of threw in there to, you know, make it it's a make tease. it fit. It's a prick tease. That's yeah. what the helicopters were. Wait, uh, well, there goes the family friendly rating, and it wasn't Whoa. Nick this time. For All once, right. thank God. <laughs> All right, so uh, come on, my backers are carrying the show on the inappropriate comments. That's going to get us banned. All right. What about you, Billy? What did you think of the cover? So, Ranger Nick. What you got, boss? When uh, when were you in the regiment? Uh, from like, 97 I, I, to 2000. Okay. Um, my my, I, I love the cover. I love that his gear is accurate. But would he... I mean, the only issue that I had with it is a gear issue. And wouldn't he be better suited to be wearing like an airframe? Yeah, probably. Instead of that big bulky ninety speed helmet, yeah, that and those those nods are just I know they're 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 those animated are, cartoon, but those are some old school nods. That that's what like the uh, the little bird pilots would wear those A A and PVS. I think they're eighteens. The, yeah, the little tube. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, as far as the kit, because. Um, yeah, he'd have a um, a high eared helmet. He'd, yeah, he'd have an airframe. Um, yeah, because he he looks like he's wearing like a a, a little bird helmet. You know, because yeah, you know, they would they would typically have man. that with like a with like a single tube on. And um, I don't know a single ranger that wears the neck collar on their uh, their armor. Yeah, I don't know a single soldier that wears the neck collar on the armor. Yeah, they they oh, no. suck. Oh, they're horrible. They just, they're just suck. like you can microwave and, a burrito in between your neck and that thing. It's and the poor, the hot. poor bastard is rocking an ACOG. Like, get some better optics, my dude. Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna stop. You're right falling apart. Okay, Archangel. <laughs> that that is a tried and true piece of no, 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 no. It is, but this is this is like high speed, super modern shenanigans happening and, here. And, and, and my like, knowledge on like optics is like based on like 
what I deal with at work or what I dealt with in the military. And I know there's better stuff out there, like hands down. Like I, I can see why they used it because it's recognizable. Yeah. It's uh, it's something that any, uh, and any, any asshole could, could figure out. It. Yeah. Any yeah. normie can look at them like, okay, well, you know, he's rocking an ACOG, you know, but, but otherwise, no, I, I really like the cover. I like Daniel said, I like the blend. Um, you know, he's got his high speed gear on his PC pistol mags that you can see. Um, you can tell he is an operator operating operationally, but there's also oh, a free follow my in the background. Are you kidding me? I say that shit all the time. It's That's good to classic. see operators operating operationally. Absolutely. <laughs> Ranger. Okay. PLF. You know. I'm pretty sure I posted that on uh, uh, Spears, one of his posts. <laughs> but I thoroughly enjoy the cover there, Jr. Okay. So uh, before before she <laughs> dies of laughter. Uh, Doc, what did you think of the cover? Because then we're going to let Nick go full art house on it. I really like the cover. It's very um, Pat, uh, early D&D fantasy castle. I really thought that was super awesome. Um, the typography was pretty good. Um, so it stood out, but it wasn't so blaringly that it broke everything. So I thought it was good. I'm not an artsy fartsy. I'm a sciencey sciencey and a fantasy person. I do magic and science, not art. Hand wavy um. So uh, I'll go next, and then we'll let we'll let uh, Nick bring the art discussion home. Most of the picture just looks kind of grayscale to me. Next, Nick. One second, I am typing something hilariously funny. <laughs> bring it. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> so so why does it look grayscale to you? Is that because you got hit in the head a lot? Uh, or else covered mine, one of the two. <laughs> I understand. I get it now. Anyways, um, okay. Nick, your art take. <laughs> All right. Um, I think it is a very well laid out piece of artwork. Um, I like how the the title text um, is set behind the, uh, the young ranger here who's in the foreground. Um, that castle is so Castlevania, it's not even funny. Yes. I love that anime. That is, a, that is a Castlevania castle right there. I know, I've been playing a shit ton of it lately on my computer. Uh, old school, NES. Yes. This guy gets it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it, it's it's a well laid out piece. Um, I'm not going to go art house on it and be like, oh well, you know, it talks about the dichotomy, oh. you know, dichotomy of man with the ranger and modern and postmodern into medieval and ancient. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but that was just a mock it. You just kind you of know. did. So, uh, talking to Archangel, you know, like definitely the equipment is just a little bit off, but I think the artist didn't really know any better, and we're just going to let that slide. He is wearing a set of belt for school. He's got an M4. Personally, I'd like to see him, you know, rocking a 240 because that was my baby. Um, and he should probably be wearing multicam. But other than that, you know, I, I, it's a really cool piece of artwork. And I think it would be a really cool print to take the text all off of it. I would love to hang it in my office. All yeah, right. It, that's I was I was like you said, it's take the text off of it. It really gives you like, all right, this is what the book is about. Figure it out. JR, bring it back up. Okay. Okay, because I, I, I noticed, I just noticed, when I'm like, when we talked to Nick about it, like, I didn't notice the look on that guy's face at first. Do it. Look at his face. Okay, look that at that look. look like Talker, it, though. He, no, it's because it's not. And it's not Thor, it's not either. Because um, Thor has a glorious and man it, beard. It might be, it might be Soprano. You think it, Soprano landed a spot on the cover? Come on. No. <laughs> well, it's not Java. Maybe it's Captain Knife Hand. You know what? He does look like an officer prick. I know. I was one. That's fair. Um, He's got that chiseled jaw. It's like you, you're an asshole with brass on your collar. I, I get it. No, like, that, you can just, that look on his face and there's a slight smirk in his mouth. You know, he's like, we're about to do some sketchy shit, dude. Uh, dude get I'm going to... You know, you know I'm going to turn into a spoiler. That being Captain Mike would explain the neck thing. It would. Because... Officers are very by the book. Not me. I was horrible. I was a horrible officer. Now, uh, that would be deep state if he was a ranger. Uh, yeah. No, no, you can't put that those two things together. That's not a thing. Stop. You mean deep uh. throat? <laughs> it's deep Whoa. state, not deep throat. 
throat. Kermit the Frog's oh. deep throat. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows. So, so, so uh, yeah, yeah, Jr. Yeah. Jr. Do you have the map for Forgotten Rim? You should. Uh, that up. No, I do uh, not. If he does, oh my god! Hurt. Hold on, hold on. I do have it. He is JR not the fan. He's usually a very consummate what? host. I don't know Why isn't happened. Jr. an effective host like Walt is? Walt is Boomer. like perfection. Grandpa oh, Walt has been around for a long time. I, I will catch up with him in a decade or two and maybe know the ways. <laughs> well, because if that Walt is connected to uh, Cerebro for you X-Men fans and the God Engine, which is, you know, on. if you're a DC fan, Walt is all-knowing. How, how have me and you never met, Nick? Sparky, you like, my God. God. The, the but, universe oh. unravels as it should and it doesn't do any way. It do be now, like that. I, I do don't think like Nick is... Uh, Nick, are you actually on the Discord at all? No, I'm not because that's, you know I'm some happy right. dude doesn't want to send me an invite, but that's cool. Uh, oh my god. god. Absolutely. Everyone, 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 hush. Uh, Sparky, you got it? Uh I'm trying to You can't sit with us. Okay, that's fine. It's being <laughs> it's being He's been sitting uh, here uh, raising his hand uh, all patiently like we're a good classroom full of uh, <laughs> we are give me a nerd. nerd. I mean, if JR was actually a proper moderator, he'd just start muting people. <laughs> Wait, I could do that? Yes, you can. You have oh the my power. God. Wait a minute. Jr. is not that tech savvy. My nine-year-old can do it. Well, where is he? Oh, Dang go. it! Make him on his side. There we go. There we I go. told him I'd back his pay if he came in while I was filming. There you go, uh, Jr. All right, I'm adding it to the stream. You can do it. And then it was. Can he do it though? Yeah. I don't know. All right, you've got to keep it up. You you minimize it, it'll go away. Figure it out, Sparky. Usually this works. There it's working go. now. There you go. Okay, I can't see anybody. I'll just stare at the camera blindly like an idiot now. Oh, look. Uh, right. deployed there, fought there. <laughs> Hooker's there. <laughs> uh, that's just your weekend. Behave. All right, so... so. One of my favorite things is how detailed that map is, and I really want to have that on my wall, where it should be as a <coughs> big uh, poster, a uh, or a cloth wall scroll, because I think I don't know why Nick badass. and Jason aren't like really focusing on the merchandising of this. I mean, honestly, it's I because they're both. actually focusing on writing as opposed to uh, you know they, doing they, stupid they, shit that we asked them to do. Like, hey, like, can you make, guys, make them more fucking money? Well, do you guys want yeah. content or do you want you know shenanigans to they're put only up two, man. like uh, well both? Hey, you know what? I can run shenanigans. I can run the R and D part of that. You want this done as a print? Got you. I'm the art guy. You know. Also, this Ranger Panties. Manager. And Ranger Panties. Oh, kind of That's why I never skip leg day, because I wear those things on the rig. Oh, and I'm so pale, it would be awesome. Oh, dude. Right. dude yeah, like, my, I'm an too. Irish vampire. Like, it's not even funny. I reflect sunlight. I'm Irish and German, so... Yeah, oh. same. Yeah, yeah. We, we suffer from the same affliction. We don't like sunlight. All right, so the reason they don't do the... Uh... They don't do all the merch just because what people say they want and what they'll actually buy are two separate things. Yeah. And hosting merch yeah. costs yeah. money. Now, Shit, like the mm -hmm. fund them with the. All right. If they put out Ranger panties with the Liege logo on it and like maps of you know the the world in Forgotten Ruin. Oh yeah, my dumbass would buy all that. Well, all right, I've so been yeah. asking. We've been asking for Ranger panties for like the past uh, what was it? Four uh, years. Four years. I've yeah. been asking. Wait, wait, wait. As the woman in the show, I must tell you. Asking and consenting are two different things. Now, next question, Jr. Thank you, thank you. All right. Okay, so, so we don't we don't done. ask. We just we just do. We show up to Jason's house and we say, "All right, so uh, if you don't get us the Ranger panties, we're gonna do things." I want you to repeat that sentence in your head ten times while oh, Jr. asks the next question. Jr. All right. go for it. Let's review the novel. We're going to do the overall review of the novel. We use the one to five star <laughs> rating, just like on the reviewing platform. So please remember, dear listener or viewer, to please be kind and speak your mind on the reviewing platforms because reviews do matter. But if you were going to give it a one to five star rating, uh, what would it be and why? And we will start with you, Sparky. Of course. I always go first. Uh, I'm going to give it a five. <laughs> it has magical powers. I'm going to give it a five because honestly, Forgotten Ruin reignited my interest and passion for fantasy because I've been burned out on it. It was just different enough. It just 
it did it for me. So I get a five just on that. All right. What about you, Archangel? Uh, same, same. For the exact same reasons. Okay. That'll be quick. What about you, Dan? What was it on a scale of one to five? Uh, it would be a five. If I was like everybody else, no, uh, it's a fun. It's, 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 you are. Well, you let me sheep. think about it. Honestly, I, I, I could say I've I've read or listened to some maybe better fantasy books, but none that have done the uh, the U.S. Army Rangers thrown into that. So. I'd say for that, yeah, it's a five. Um, compared to other fantasy books, I'd say maybe a four, because some fantasy books do a little bit more in regards to like you know the D and D themes and stuff like that. But yeah, no, it's a good book, and I and I, I recommend it. Um, so yeah, be be like Jr. said, be kind and speak your mind, and uh, give it a listen. All right. So that leaves Nick. Oh, I I give it a five. It's a solid five. And why? Why? Because it's Rangers fighting fucking orcs, man. What else do I need? I'm very simple. I'm like, I'm horrible with the star system. It's like, it's, like, it's my regiment kicking the crap out of things that I read about since I was a kid. You know, that's freaking cool. You know, the only thing you can make it cooler is if you throw in some kaiju in there. You know, and then we had all my like geekery. Maybe <laughs> make, you know, PFC talker like turn them into Ultraman. That's like the only thing that would make this book any cooler. You know, it's it's Rangers with modern weaponry jacking up, you know, orcs and elves and witches and a, eventually a dragon. Hopefully, I want to see him wreck shop on a dragon. Well, I mean, I mean, somebody did take a uh, a, a shrapnel. Carl Gustav, you know, thing to 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 the scales. Just saying, something like that did happen to an extent. It, it did, yeah, for like three I pages. See, I need more. I need, I need more cowbell. I need more cowbell. I can't wait to read more of this series. Um, <laughs> it no, I give it a five. It's 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 brilliant. Um, I, I just like the uh, the combination and merger of two genres, and it's it's. It's pretty cool stuff. So if you're if you haven't if you're a fan of either mill sci-fi stuff and you're a fan of fantasy, if you're a fan of Rangers and the military and you're a fan of Tolkien, pick up this book, please. So they make more. So I don't I'll have add to, this. You know, it's, it's, just, add, it's awesome. I'll add this to Ranger Nick. Any book that shows the Rangers love especially is awesome. We've had too many books going for seals and everything else. The Ranger needs some love. Yo, hands hey, down, the regiment definitely and needs look, some love. And look, they actually had you know a green beanie in there, so good for them. You know, they're yeah, they're, they're based. We do have them. Usually, we yeah. have eighteen deltas, which are the yeah. medics. They usually work in our, uh, you know, in our our med shed. So they are gods on the field. Oh, they're they're gods. Whatever. I mean, like they can keep a goat alive after you've torched it with a flamethrower, <laughs> stabbed it in the neck, and peed on I, it or whatever. You know, these guys are awesome. You know, the Psalm C course is no joke. If I if I go ahead and make this uh, commercial that I threatened Nick with um, last time I was on a podcast with him about a sow tea, um, I feel like that unit is going to be written in somewhere in one of the farther down the road books, and I'm very excited for that possibility. Because we need a magical special weatherman just so the Air Force feels special. You're damn right. <laughs> I will some, stick Casey on all of you. Some Those Air Force guys. They they almost joined the military. Some jackass firing an M4 and then calling out the weather. What's not <laughs> to love about that? With his little his little his little glider. His yeah, his little drum. glider or his um oh, right. or, his, or his hummingbird that he carries around with him. Yeah. It makes him look cool at the range. He's like, oh I'm just checking windage. No, you're not. You're no you're not. <laughs> Fair enough. What about you, Doc? What did you think overall? One to five and why? Um, I give it probably like a 4.75. Ooh, just to be different. Okay. And why? No, it's not just to be different. There, there were some things I really thought they did a lot really good. Um, they did Yeah, the he was an 84, so that took away 0.25 right there. That, that does not, that does not take away 0.25. 
but um i really want to see where they go with it uh i feel like there were some things that were a little predictable but you know i i will admit not to toot my own heart I've, I've read so much that sometimes i can see the trope before the trope is fully laid out but i really did enjoy it uh i thought it was a super good read well worth the listen uh or the time to read it either one however you want to imbibe your your story um i think the problem is probably like i'm not sure i'm that into like in some ways the uh never ending taco machine concept i, I think it's great but i just how often was like that it implemented, it's just too easy so well, it would be if well that's a spoiler so we'll stop but mm. um i think i think you know they gave them the magic wand and they took the magic wand away and it balances everything um and, and who doesn't love tacos i mean what kind of heathen would you be if you didn't like tacos uh well, I, really I will say i will say more with the baroness chalupas chalupas are better than tacos and uh the above all else, a proper burrito is is better than than that. So yeah, just so you know. That's six and going seven. on the list. That's six and seven, my dude. All right, I love so that I, pin, by the way. Damn right. Right. Who doesn't love a good whale tail? All right, so family. I've met a couple of those off base. All right. Boy. So I get I'd give it a five for for much the same reason. I enjoyed the action. I like everything about. Sticking uh, modern. And it's not groups. just because they sponsor our show. They don't they, sponsor they, our show. They, don't they sponsor really us. should sponsor our show. But well, uh, I mean, I, if I, if I recall, they don't even sponsor the Galaxy's Edge podcast. I mean, no, it's, <laughs> it says they do. It's on I the commercial. Why? them off. I love you guys. Keep well, to be money. honest, to be fair, they're giving you material. So, what more do you want? But fair, fair enough. All right, so I like that the uh, they had the action where you, you got to see all the the ancient stuff. I do think the possibility of knowing it's in the future, um, which means some of the stuff like we don't have answers for yet, like that we were, we briefly mentioned it jokingly about the International Space Station if it crashed down. Like, how cool would that be? Like a, a horde of undead astronauts. A horde of undead astronauts started stumbling out of the station when it landed like, down. Like, like liches? That would be cool. Like I just you know just throwing ideas out there if they're taking notes. I just, like, oh shit! I Space necromancers, right? <laughs> Space necromancers. No, just so just in front of everything. <laughs> Space I like skeletons. Space I, I skeletons. like I like their blend of portal fantasy and fantasy and military you know thriller and, and sort of threw it in the blender and created this this awesome thing they're calling Wargate. That was was kind of cool. Um, I'm excited to see where they go with it. And, uh, and as we've mentioned several times, if you haven't Spooky, reviewed the scary book, Space Skeletons, that's what we've mentioned several times. If you times. don't review the book, Deep State wakes back up, and you don't want that. Nobody wants Deep State around. Just saying. Keep that dude on ice. Nobody likes Deep State right. on ice. Or, him on ice. Just or let him not the out. Not the out. All right. So uh, if these books intrigued you, uh, we'll link to them in the show notes, and you can find um, – Jason you can and pay me at uh, Geraldus, uh, can... and and send me money. That's fine. I, I'm going to send you unsolicited D pics, man. Nice <laughs> diving pictures. He likes the ocean. All right, I so have got... pictures. Dollar pictures. pop. <laughs> All yeah, right, if you, you want me to stop? My PayPal is. <laughs> All right. So the Forgotten Ruin website is www.forgottenruin.com. You can join their newsletter at www.inthelegion.com. They have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com backslash Forgotten Ruin Books. And you can find us on our website at anchor.fm backslash blasters, tack, and tack blades. Anchor.fm backslash blasters, tack, and tack blades. You can find us on Twitter at sf underscore fantasy underscore show. Twitter.com backslash Sierra Foxtrot underscore fantasy underscore show. You can email us at blasters and blades podcast at gmail.com. Sometimes we even answer it if we remember to look. We have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com backslash blasters and blades podcast. If you want to help keep the light on and uh, keep Nick drunk, uh, we have a buy me a coffee <laughs> site at buymeacoffee.com backslash author JR Hanley and put in the, the comment section that is for the podcast. Doc, bring us home before this thing goes crashing and burning to the ground. 
The gorgeous you know, fans love it. It's one of the most favorite parts of the show. They know this. You're just afraid Grandpa Walt's going to come and get you. He's going to come after me first. <laughs> I don't care. He's, uh, and he's going to like it. I'm the newest guy, so I'll be the last to watch kills. Thank you I for hope. spending some of your precious time with us. For Nick Gerber, J.R. Hanley, I'm Seska. This was the Blasters and Blades podcast. We'll be back next week at maybe the same time where we'll indulge our love of nerd culture, cheesy jokes, anything crazy and ADHD, and all things that go boom. And drunk shenanigans, mostly. And if you want to uh, hey, check out hey, the... Forgot shenanigans was in our last name, and it was truth in advertising. All right, hush. hey Nick. You... This is this is for you. I was I would like please more <laughs> of earlier. Um, it is important. All right, as soon as we go off, okay, you can get all the, nip the podcast and send us money, and we'll give you more. I'll have all more. Right. more cowbell. Yeah. Right. Thanks for joining the blasts and blades.